In this video, we solve problem 15.2.042 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. We're asked to find the work done by the force field F on a particle moving along the path. This is our force field and our path is given by C. It's the line segment from 0, 0, 0 to um, X equals nine, Y equals seven and Z equals four. Now, since we're finding the work, done by a field F as we travel along a path C, that's given by this line integral. We're taking the force and we're dotting it with a tiny displacement. And we're doing that for all of the points along that path C. Now in practice, we need a variable to tie everything together. Um, and the variable that we use to tie everything together is the variable T. Now, just to give us a sense of what's going on, let's sketch a little cartoon of the situation. Maybe at t equals a, we're at this location. And then as t increases, we might travel along a path that looks like that. At t equals b, we might end up over there. That's our path c. Now C would be given by some vector valued function, R of T with components X of T, Y of T, and Z of T. We want R of T to be a piecewise smooth parameterization of C for T between A and B so that as T um, changes, as, as we go from T equals A to T equals B, we travel along that path. We trace out the entire thing. Now remember how this works. This is a position vector. We're saying at a certain time, or we can think of T as representing time, we're at a particular location. That location is X of T, Y of T, and Z of T. So we can think of our X position, our Y position, and our Z position as functions of T. Now, if when we're on this path, if that path is in a force field, Sounds like science fiction. It's really uh, not that complicated. All, all this means is that with every position x, y, z, for which the component functions of the field are well-defined, um, we'll have a force acting at that position. Um, in this case, the force at acting at point x, y, z is given by this times i hat plus this times j hat plus this times k hat. So at every location, we would have a little force vector. Now we can't draw them all, because then the whole paper would be blue. But at all the different locations, we get different forces. And specifically, as we're traveling along this path, at each of the different locations along this path, we're also experiencing a different force. So for a little ant traveling along this path, we'll experience different forces at different points. Now, the force field is actually a function of position, but if you're an ant traveling along that path, you can imagine that force is changing with time. It's going to feel like that force is a function of time when you're on that path. And so with that in mind, when we evaluate this line integral, um, that variable t is the variable that ties everything together. That force field can be written in terms of t. It's a function of x, y, and z, but x, y, and z are functions of t, provided that we have this piecewise smooth parameterization of our curve. So we replace x with x of t, y with y of t, and z with z of t, and now our force is a function of t. Now that tiny displacement is going to be given by the velocity times some change in time. Velocity times change in time is displacement. We take that dot product, that's just a function of t, and then we'll integrate for all the t values um, that, that give us this curve. If we start here at t equals a, and as t increases, we trace out the curve and we end here when t equals b, we would just integrate from t equals a to b. Now, in order to use this, we need a few things. We need first to find a piecewise smooth parameterization of our curve c.
And that is not unique. There are lots of different correct parameterizations of the same curve. And then once we have that piecewise smooth parameterization of C, we'd have an X of T, a Y of T, and a Z of T, then we would need to find the field in terms of T. Just by making that substitution, replace the X with X of T, replace the Y with Y of T, and replace the Z with Z of T. And then of course you will compute that velocity vector R prime. Then you'll compute the dot product of F with R prime, that'll be the integrand. And then you will set up and evaluate the integral to find the work done by that force as a particle or on a particle traveling along that path. And that's just what you'll use for your integrand and you'll just integrate from t equals a to t equals b. Easy breezy. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to think about our path. Now our path doesn't actually look like this. Our path is pretty simple. C is a line segment. It starts at zero, zero, zero and ends at x equals nine, y equals seven, z equals four. Since it's a line segment, one parameterization that we can use is just the parametric equations of a line that we learned in that first chapter when we first started studying um, geometry of space. When we were studying geometry of space, we said, if we have some line and that line passes through the point x naught, y naught, z naught, and it has a direction vector v with components a, b, and c, that entire line can be traced out using these as the parametric equations for that line. We start with x naught, y naught, and z naught when t equals zero. And then for x, y, and z respectively, we're going to add the component of v in that direction times t. So to find x of t, I just take x naught and I add a t. For y of t, I have y naught plus b t. And for z of t, we have a z naught plus c t. If I've got two points, that's enough for me to find the direction vector. Um, and we can use x naught, y naught, z naught equals zero, zero, zero. So subbing that in, x naught, y naught, z naught, zero, zero, zero. And the direction vector of our line is pretty simple. We start at zero, we go nine units in the x direction, and seven units in the y direction, and four units in the z direction. Now, if we weren't starting at zero, 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 you could think of this as a point P and that as a point Q, and find the vector from P to Q just by taking the coordinates of this vector, or this, this point, coordinates of this location, and subtracting the coordinates of that location. Um, so we would take the nine, seven, and four and subtract zero, zero, and zero, and we would end up with the same direction vector. So that gives us our A, B, and C. We'll write those there, A, B, and C, and multiply each of those by T. So this is our X of T, that's our Y of T, and that's our Z of T. So our piecewise smooth parameterization of our line segment starting at the origin and ending at that location is this, x equals 9t, y equals 7t, and z equals 4t. Now we also have to have a range of t values. When t is equal to zero, x, y, and z are all zero. So we know we want to start with t equals zero. And then we might say to ourselves, okay, what would t need to be so that 9t is equal to 9, 7t is equal to 7, and 4t is equal to 4? 
Well, if t is equal to one, the x, y, and z are all equal to the nine, seven, and four that we want them to be equal to. So that gives us our a and our b for our substitution at the end that will allow us to evaluate that line integral. And this is our x of t and our y of t and our z of t. That's how I find a piecewise smooth parameterization when I'm dealing with a line. Now it gets a little bit more involved if we're not dealing with a line, but for a line segment, um, that's what we can do. All right, so now we've got our um, all of t, which gives us our x, y, and z. So the next thing we want to do is find f in terms of t. So initially I'll write my f down, it was, y times z times i hat plus x times z times j hat plus x times y times k hat. I prefer component form. So I'll write that like that. Now I want that in terms of t. So I want to replace x with x of t, y with y of t, and z with z of t. And x is 9t using this parameterization. y is 7t and z is 4t. So f in terms of t will be given by this. So y times z times i hat plus x times z times j hat plus x times y times k hat. y was 7t, that's a y times a z. So I'll have 7t times 4t. This is an x times a z. So I'll have 9t, that's my x, times my z, which is 4t. And for my uh, z component, I've got my x value, which is 9t, and then my y value, which is 7t. And we simplify from there. Okay, and we keep going. I love this version of the equation because it tells me exactly what to do. Find this in terms of t. Now I want to find r prime, and then eventually after that, I'm going to take the dot product. It's easy enough. So we know that r has these components. Remember from unit two, if you want to find r prime, you just take the derivative of each component separately. Derivative of a constant times t is just that constant. So we computed f in terms of t, we've got r prime, which is of course in terms of t. Now we wanna compute that dot product, which will be our integrand. Now remember how we compute dot products. It's this times this, x component times x component. We have 28 times nine t squared plus, this times this plus this times this dot products always yield scalars excuse me so i've got 28 times 9 times t squared plus 36 times 7 times t squared plus 30 or 63 times 4 times t squared that's just a number times t squared and in this case that's 756 So we've got 756t squared, that's my integrand. And we integrate that dot product from t equals a to t equals b. And t equals a and b were zero and one. So the line integral over c of f dotted with dr is the integral from zero to one of this 756t squared with respect to t. Bring the 756 down, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, just the power rule. Then you wanna plug in zero and a one and subtract. And plug in one, we get that. Subtracting zero doesn't do anything. So we end up with 756 divided by three, which is 252. And it'll be units of force times units of displacement, um, depending on what 
um, this force is measured in and displacement is measured in in our three dimensional space. So it's just 252. I hope that helps you. I think it's really simple. Just find the force in terms of T, find your velocity vector. Velocity times that time is giving you displacement. Force out of the displacement is work. So conceptually, it makes sense. But practically, when you're doing the application problem, when you're actually solving this, you just write this in terms of T, you compute this, you compute a dot product, make sure you've got the right bounds, and then integrate. For many students, the hard part is coming up with this piecewise smooth parameterization, which isn't too bad for a line segment. We'll just use those uh, um, parametric equations for lines that we studied in our first unit in Calculus 3.